if they can take one of our God-given rights, which is protected by the Bill of Rights, all right, understand this. Understand this, those of you that do not understand the Bill of Rights. It is not a piece of paper giving you rights. It is a piece of paper that protects your rights against the government. Hello, YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Ladies and gentlemen, we all prep in order to secure the well-being of our families. All right, we make sure that we have enough water so that not only I or you can have enough water, but so that your family members can have enough water. We make sure we have enough food. Why? So that we don't starve. What good are all of the preps that you have put away if you cannot secure them, if you cannot protect them against those people that refused to prepare during the good times so that they can get by during the hard times? I normally don't do these videos because YouTube just doesn't like them and I am more of spreading the word of preparedness, make sure you get ready for anything than getting into gunfights and stuff like that. You know, I am not a gunsmith, so I am not proficient in taking an entire firearm apart. You know, I know how to field strip it, I know how to operate it. Any kind of weapon that you may have, you should be proficient in using it and at least, at the minimum, servicing it by field stripping it, cleaning it, putting it back together. So I thought that I'd go ahead and read this article. I just came across this and it came out here on the 4th of July. So obviously the mainstream media is not going to go ahead and show this a lot. Maybe you'll see a small clip here or there. Then again, I don't know because I don't watch mainstream media, but a lot of people probably missed this because it came out on the 4th of July. But here it says 61% of all U.S. counties are now Second Amendment sanctuaries. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you what, it doesn't matter what side you're on, your freedoms are secured by being able to own a firearm, to defend yourselves against anything and anyone. And also, there are a lot of people whose lifestyles depend on that tool, which is a firearm. Let's go ahead and read on and see what this says. I actually haven't read this article. I just saw the title and I was like, wow, this is awesome. So let's see what they say here. The majority of all U.S. counties have been designated as Second Amendment sanctuaries, according to an analysis by SanctuaryCounties.com. As of June 20th, there are 1,930 counties protected by Second Amendment sanctuary legislation at either the state or county level representing 61% of the 3,141 counties and county equivalents in all states and in the District of Columbia. Texas was the 21st state to pass a constitutional carry bill, which the governor signed into law and becomes effective on the 1st of this September. And while some state legislatures are not taking the same action, county officials have chosen to enact their own legislation that is great, ladies and gentlemen. When your greater government, for example, your state or your federal, doesn't want to act, then you have to act from the bottom up. Grassroots efforts are a lot more effective in changing policy than are efforts that are done at a state or national level. So that is great. Roughly 1,137 counties have taken it upon themselves to pass Second Amendment sanctuary legislation and likely hundreds of cities, townships, boroughs, etc. have done so at their level as well. That's great. The Second Amendment sanctuary movement was born out of a grassroots effort brought on by county or municipal leaders who vowed to not enforce any gun laws imposed by the state or federal bodies they deemed were unconstitutional. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that, man, when I read this, it just, it almost makes me emotional. That is what a republic is. Not a country that is governed by the federal government, but a country that is governed from the bottom up, right? We have to look out for the minority, not the majority. Sheriffs have also made pledges to uphold the Second Amendment. Most recently, every sheriff in Utah. Good for you, Utah. Good for you, Utah sheriffs. Every sheriff in Utah has pledged 
to uphold the Second Amendment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't only have to do about the Second Amendment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, understand this. Our rights, the Bill of Rights, that is a piece of paper that protects our God-given rights from the government. That is why the Bill of Rights was published. Because it is something that protects our God-given rights, rights that we were born with from the government. Many people think that we are given our rights from the government and therefore they can take them away. No, ladies and gentlemen, understand that the Bill of Rights protect those rights. You were born with those rights. What's so important about this that I'm reading right now, it's not just about the Second Amendment. It's that if they can take away our Second Amendment, then they can take away any other right. We have to understand that we were given these rights at birth by our Creator and that they are not to be taken away. They are only to be protected by the federal government, the state government, the local government, because they are bound to abide by the Constitution of these United States of America. Importantly, the Second Amendment of our divinely inspired Constitution clearly states, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. A letter signed by all 29 Utah sheriffs states, we hereby recognize a significant principle underlying the Second Amendment. The right to keep and bear arms is indispensable to the existence of a free people. Upon signing the new Texas law, the governor said Texas was a Second Amendment sanctuary state. Months earlier, Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts signed a proclamation giving Nebraska the same sanctuary designation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the states telling the federal government to shove it. And I love it because that's how it's supposed to be. The federal government is not supposed to talk down to us. We are supposed to talk down to it. Many people misconstrued that when you are critical of government, that you are not a patriot. And I say the opposite. I say that the most important duty that a patriot has is not to vote, ladies and gentlemen, not to vote, but to be critical of their government. Because when you are critical of your government, then the government knows that they are in check, that they are being watched, that they are going to be challenged. And this, in my opinion, is great news. As you can see, I'm very excited to read this because this is the people taking it back. This is we, the people, taking something back that these criminals on Capitol Hill have been trying to take away for so long. The movement is growing, ladies and gentlemen. In light of statements made by the president that federal government will target firearms dealers in an attempt to link the increasing number of homicides occurring in major cities to a lack of gun law enforcement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are over 22,000 gun laws on the books. It is not a law thing. You cannot pass a law to change what a person intends on doing no matter what. If they cannot find a certain tool, they will find something else. If I'm outside building my bunker and I can't find my hammer and I need to hammer a nail into a piece of wood, I'll go find a big, big rock and use that instead because I can't find my hammer. Same thing with anything else, ladies and gentlemen. It's the same thing. And keep in mind that most of these homicides that occur, occur in major cities that have extensive gun control legislation in place already. All right, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, a criminal will be a criminal no matter what laws are in place. That is what makes them a criminal. All these laws do, ladies and gentlemen, is it criminalizes law-abiding citizens, taking away their right to be able to protect themselves, and then it empowers criminals that would never have followed those laws to begin with. And this is what's so important about the 10th Amendment, ladies and gentlemen, about the states are saying, no, federal government, you will not tell us what to do. It's what the president says here next. We will find, we'll find you and we'll seek your license to sell guns. Pretty much saying that we will take away your ability to sell guns. Now, what the states are saying is this. No, you will not. If we make a gun here in Utah and we sell it here in Utah, and it stays here in Utah, you have no business coming into our state and trying to tell us what to do. 
And that is what every single state, ladies and gentlemen, that loves freedom need to do. Every single state that loves freedom needs to do this. Because like I said, it won't stop with the Second Amendment. It will continue on with, this, with, the, with the first, which they're attacking that already. Especially corporations, large social media corporations. And then with the third. How would you like it if the government just said, hey, listen, we're going to go ahead and put these soldiers in your house for a month and you have nothing to say about it. There's nothing you can do about it. All right. What about the Fourth Amendment, which has been under attack for a very long time? We can just come into your house and search anything we want and see if we can find something that's incriminating, even though you haven't done anything wrong and even though we don't have any reason to suspect that you've done anything wrong. I'm going to go ahead and finish it off at this, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm getting excited here. We'll finish it off with saying Attorney General Merrick Garland also recently argued that while the majority of licensed firearms dealers sell to individuals who pass their FBI background check, that the same dealers willfully violate the law, increase the risk that guns will fall into the wrong hands. He said the administration's plan was part of a concerted effort to crack down on gun traffickers. Isn't that something, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't that something, a statement coming from a federal official, right, from the Attorney General? Just look back a few Attorney Generals ago, right? Fast and Furious, do you all remember that? If you don't, you probably ought to look that up. I know that a lot of people probably won't agree with what I said about everyone having the freedom to own a firearm, but you better put yourselves in a position Close your eyes and put yourselves in a position where a police officer or a law enforcement officer cannot get to your residence on time because someone is breaking into your home and trying to do harm to you and to those that you love. What if you live 45 minutes outside of town where a police officer cannot get to you? And more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, the Supreme Court has already ruled multiple times Listen to this and do your research. The Supreme Court has already ruled multiple times that it is not the job of a law enforcement officer to protect you against danger. So who's going to protect you, especially when times get tough? Hopefully they won't. Trust me, I have a firearm. I have several. But I hope and I pray that I never ever have to use it to protect myself or my family. But what if I do? Would I rather have one and never use it? Or would I rather have one in case I do need it? Having said that, I hope you get something out of this. Do your own research on that Supreme Court thing because it's true. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place. And you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Lask Prepper. I am out. Nutrient survival isn't just survival food. It's special ops grade. Built to the nutritional standards of the U.S. special ops and packed with 40 essential nutrients. Formulated to sustain energy, sharpen focus, and keep you and your family thriving during any emergency. Real food, real ingredients. Oh, and a 25 year shelf life. Our meals will kick your taste buds in the mouth and have them coming back for dessert. Yeah, we've got that too. So whether you're digging in or bugging out, you don't just survive an emergency situation, you thrive in it. Nutrient Survival. Feed your freedom.